In this video, I'm going to be talking about more things that I like about the Sony FX6. Here's the story. The first thing I want to talk about is the boot up time. Now before when I was doing some speed trials with the FX6, I was turning on the camera and then trying to see how long it would take for it to boot up and then be able to start recording. And it took me about 3 seconds for the camera to boot up, hit the record button and then be able to start recording footage. This is so much quicker than other cinema cameras like RED cameras which are notorious for taking about 30 seconds just for the camera to boot up. So if you're on set and you need to turn your camera off to swap over batteries, those 30 seconds to power up that camera again could be the longest 30 seconds of your life if you've got a whole crew waiting for you. So having the really quick startup time that the Sony FX6 has is definitely something to note and be thankful for. The next thing that I like is S Cinetone and that's the picture profile that I'm finding myself recording in a lot these days when I'm doing YouTube videos like this. Right now I'm not shooting on the FX6, I'm shooting on the A7S III, but the A7S III also has S Cinetone much like the Sony FX6. This can help speed up my workflow because I don't need to color grade log footage which is notorious for taking a lot longer to color grade and to color correct more so than baked in picture profiles like S Cinetone. So this really is a time saver and I really do like the image that S Cinetone gives me with the footage. But if you're not a big fan of S Cinetone and you have your own LUTs that you like to use with S-Log3, the FX6 does allow you to import those LUTs directly into the camera so you can monitor what your footage is going to look like when you get to the edit suite, but it also has the additional function of being able to burn that LUT into the footage so you don't need to add that LUT in post. This can be a blessing and a curse because if you burn that LUT into your footage, you've bought it. And you might like how it looks, but your client might not. So for that extra flexibility in post, sometimes shooting S-Log3 might be a better choice, but it is worth noting that you can import your own favorite LUTs into the FX6 and then burn that into the footage if that is the workflow that works for you. The Sony FX6 can also work with an app called Catalyst Browse, which can help stabilize your footage in post. This is really helpful if you've got lenses like the Sony 24-70 f 2.8 GM lens that doesn't have any OSS or optical steady shot. You can import your footage into this app and then stabilize it there. The big drawback for this is it is quite processor intensive and it can take a bit of time to be able to stabilize the footage. And personally, this isn't a function that I've used a lot. However, it is nice to know that it's there and it is good to know that that's another tool I've got in the toolbox. One thing to note, Catalyst Browse will only stabilize the footage if you don't have OSS on your lens turned on. If you do have it turned on, it will unfortunately give you an error and you won't be able to stabilize the footage. So that is definitely something to be aware of. Next, I really like that there's a level indicator on the display for the Sony FX6. This is really helpful if I've got my camera on a tripod and I'm in a dark situation and I can't necessarily see the spirit level on my tripod. I can just quickly look at my display and see that it is level. It's also really helpful if you're going handheld and you're not tipping too far to the left or too far to the right, and you're nice and balanced. So I find having this level indicator on the display very convenient. You can also set the camera to display your focal length or your zoom length, depending on what kind of lens you're using. If you're using a prime lens, you'll know that it is a 50 millimeter lens or it is a 35 millimeter lens. But if you're using a zoom lens like the Sony 24 to 105 F4 OSS lens, you might not necessarily know exactly what your focal length is unless you look at your lens and try to figure it out from the indicators on that. I find this really helpful for my own personal use and I just thought I'd make mention of this because this function isn't on every single camera. You can also use the touch screen to set your focus, but this only works in certain modes. Unfortunately, the touch feature doesn't work in the normal autofocus mode that I use, which is the face eye priority. I normally have that set to wide, but you need to have it on flexible spot in order for this function to work. Another thing to note is that the FX6 does not have a recording time limit. You're only limited to the amount of memory cards you've got in your Sony FX6, which is a really good thing to have. Unfortunately, there are still cameras being released today that have five minute time limits and even 30 minute time limits. So it's really handy to know that the Sony FX6 doesn't have this limitation. A practical example of this is if I'm out on location and I'm doing a long form interview and it's just myself and the person being interviewed, I don't need to be constantly looking off at the camera to see if it's still recording. I can have the confidence to know that after I hit record, the recording will keep on going until I hit stop. So that is another thing that I really appreciate about the Sony FX6. 
The Sony FX6 is also a full frame camera and I really do like the look of full frame. Some of my previous cameras have been Super 35 or Micro Four Thirds and they do give a different kind of look to the image and I really do like the full frame look overall. But another reason that I like that it's full frame is because my B camera is also full frame. So my previous AB camera setup was the Panasonic EVA 1 and the Panasonic S1 and the Panasonic EVA 1 had a Super 35 sensor and the Panasonic S1 had a full frame sensor. And when I was doing multi-camera shoots, I'd have to constantly be doing the math in my head trying to figure out, okay, the S1 has a 50 mil lens on it and the Panasonic EVA 1 has a 35 mil lens on it. So then that then makes it turn into a 52.5 mil or something like that equivalent to full frame. And it's just another thing that I have to worry about. And I really like that the FX6 and the Sony a7S III are both full frame cameras and they're both my A and B cameras that I use when I go on location to do shoots. And it just simplifies the process and makes things just a little bit easier and one less thing I need to worry about when I'm on set. The Sony FX6 also barely has any crop factor when you're going into high frame rate modes. So when I'm talking about high frame rate, I mean anything over 60 frames per second. When you go over 60 frames per second on the Sony FX6, you get a crop factor of 1.1, which is barely anything when you compare it to other cameras that when they go into their high frame rate mode, they start to crop into a Super 35 or an APS-C crop factor, which is a 1.5 times crop factor. So having that 1.1 crop factor when going into those high frame rate zones isn't really a big concern for me. Another thing that I like about the Sony FX6 is you can record time lapses directly into the camera. So there are two ways that I like to do this. One is through the S and Q mode where you can get one frame every second and it goes as long as you want it to go until you hit stop. And the other way is to go into the interval record function. And this mode gives you a lot more control over how many frames that you take and the intervals that you take them in. So it's good to know that there are two different ways that you can get time lapses out of the FX6. And also when you pair this with the internal electronic variable ND, it is a really powerful combination getting some outdoor time lapses. And the last thing I wanna mention in this video is that the Sony FX6 can record up to four channels of audio. And you can get two channels through the top handle and then two channels through the MI or multi-interface hot shoe, which is also found on the handle. For example, you could have two channels of audio going into the top handles XLRs. And then if you've got the multi-interface shoe adapter connected to a dual channel receiver, like the Sony one, which is pictured here, you could then have up to four channels of audio going into your Sony FX6 all at one time. But if you don't need four different inputs going into your FX6 all at once, for example, you only need two channels of audio because you're using a lapel mic and a shotgun mic to interview a talent, you could then have safety tracks set up on your channels three and four. So on channel one, you could have your lapel, channel two, you could have your shotgun mic, and then on channel three, you could have a safety track for your lapel, and on channel four, you could have a safety track for your shotgun. And this is really helpful just to protect your audio, just in case someone starts talking really loud and then the audio peaks and distorts. If you've got a safety track set a little lower than what you're recording on your channels one and two, this could really save you in the edit to avoid that crunchy, distorted audio. And that's the video. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on video creation in the future.